Hey y'all, it's Kay. Today I want to show you how to take some pre-made items. I got these at the Dollar General. I have a few more over here to the side. This actually came from Hobby Lobby, but it has that same feel of the roses. This monthly planner also came from the Dollar General that goes with this set. And these sticky notes also from the Dollar General. So I want to take these pre-made items and then let's just zhuzh them up in a little bit, make them a little better, and do a small journal. Then we'll do a little paper crafting. So let me gather a few more materials and we'll get started. to do for our planner is make a cover. I have chosen this paper that I found in this collection called Petticoats and Pinstripes. It's by Echo Park Paper Company. If you have watched me any time in the past, you know that I absolutely love Echo Park to craft with. So we're going to take this sheet from this collection, and this is the inside. Look at that pale pink and lace. I hope you can tell how beautiful that is. It is directional, so we have to keep that in mind. We want our paper to go this way. Well, our book is a six by eight, so we know that this one sheet is not going to cover our book, but we have a solution for that. We're going to cut this in half after we get our height, and then we'll make us a new spine, and that's how we'll stretch our paper out and make this one sheet work with a little help on our cover. So this will be our directional paper, but we need to get our height first for our book. I think we'll take it off this end. Since our book is eight inches tall, we're going to cut this at a little over eight and a quarter. There's our eight and a quarter mark, and we'll go one more. And that will give us our height for our book. And we'll just cut that off and save that for later. You can make a bookmark out of that. There's a lot of things you can do. Actually, we could even use it for our spine. And now I'm going to cut this in half. So I'm going to cut it as close to the six inches as possible. And that gives us our height and our back and our front. There's our back and our front. So that'll cover our books. Now we just need a spine. This is a piece of Echo Park also from that same collection. We're going to cut our spine at about two and a quarter inches. Just like that. And then we need to get our height. Our height is going to be the same as our small sheets. And now we'll cut our height. We're going to cut it at eight and a quarter inches, just like we cut our front pieces. I'm gonna cut that just a little longer. If I need to, I'll trim. And so that's going to go as our spine. So we need to connect these sheets, but first I want to do a little scoring. Our spine is eight and a quarter inches long by two and a quarter inches wide. We want the inside measurement that is part of our book to be three quarters of an inch. So we're going to score it at three fourths of an inch. So I just find my three fourths line. And y'all, I'm working under some primitive circumstances here today as I'm setting up my new recording area for paper crafting. And this is a busy pattern. And I'm just going to turn it over and do three quarters of an inch again. This way we'll have three quarters of an inch overlap on the front and the back. You just want to score it carefully. You don't want to go too deep because if you do, it'll tear your paper. So I'm going to fold this over now and then we'll burnish it down. And then let's burnish the next one down. 
just like so. All right, so now we have what will become our spine to our book. Now let's bring over our pages and we'll mount those to it and then we'll laminate it. I'm just going to use this 3 8 inch score tape. I got it off of Amazon. If you buy more than one, you get a better deal and you can get different sizes. 3 8 inch is the one I use most often, but I do like to have other ones as well. So, I'm going to take my score tape. I have my little burnishing tool from Cricut. And I'm going to place this close to the edge. Like I said, we are going to laminate it so it's not as critical to be exactly right. And once you get the stuff down, guys, it sticks. So you have to just go with it. And we'll tear that off. That's what that tool is so good for. Put one on the other side. And we're just using this, like I said, to put our pages in. And we'll just tear that off. You know, that always goes better when you're not filming. Okay, so you've got your sheets on there, your tape. We need to burnish it down. Make sure it's on there good. And then we'll take our Cricut tool again, this little pokey tool. Y'all love this thing. Works great for paper crafting, of course, for all your Cricut projects. And we'll remove the tape, the backing from the tape. And there you have it. And we'll bring over our two sheets. And that's our front, and this is our back, making sure the direction is going the right way. And we want to make sure we don't go exactly into the fold. We want to be just a little bit off from the fold. I'm gonna actually do this off camera and I'll be right back because it's easier for me to line it up off camera. So here is our cover so far. We have the cute spine and the front. I think that matches so well. This is the inside and the back cover. I don't really like the way this looks, so I cut another piece of our green paper in the same measurements, folded it over, and now I'm going to go in and glue this down as well, and then we can laminate it. So I think I'll just use my 3 8 inch score tape, and then I won't have to wait for my glue to dry, and we'll laminate next. And now I'll just speed up this process and take off this tape and put down the inside part of our spine. These are the laminating pouches I'm going to use. They are eight and a half by 11. I got them at Staples and they're five millimeters thickness. And I am going to have to use two for the cover so I can overlap them in the middle. If you have the larger ones, you wouldn't have to do that. You can buy a larger size, but every time I go to Staples, they seem to be out of them. I want to laminate my cover. Because my sheets are eight and a half by 11, they won't go all the way across. You can see there would be some left over. And I don't like to piece mine here on the end. What I like to do is pull this back. I'll actually cut it off and make sure that it lines up just a little over the halfway mark, pretty close to where my spine starts in the back here. And then I'll take my second sheet and do the same thing. We'll cut it at about, oh, six and a half inches and we'll place it and overlap the first one. And then we'll put it through our laminator. So I'm going to go off camera. I'm going to trim this sheet to six and a half and this sheet to six and a half. And that will leave me still my pockets. And don't worry, we're not gonna waste anything. We'll save those sheets for another project. But we'll overlap it there in the middle. And you can see here, I have my sheets lined up. So we want to put it in the laminator that way. This is my laminator, and I'm sorry if you can hear that rattling noise because it's quite old, so it makes noise. Actually, they all do, but this one's probably louder than normal. And we'll let that heat up, and when the light turns on over here, we'll know it's ready to go, and I'm going to run it through the laminator twice. It needs to go through at least twice, and then I'll check it to see if it needs to go a third time because our materials are quite thick. Now that the light is red here, I know my machine is ready and heated. So I'm going to make sure the overlapping one goes in first. We're going to line this up here. Okay. 
Once it cools off, you want to cut it and leave room for this air pocket here. So you want to cut it at about eighth of an inch all the way around. Now that it's laminated and it's all cut out, then we need to go back and gently score our folds again. You just want, don't want to overwork it, but you want to kind of work it back where those folds were. And you can rescore it if you want to. I just like to take my time and gently fold it because it has two thicknesses in some areas now. Don't want to overwork it too fast because I think that rolled up on the edge right there a little bit. And you can see it's starting to come together. Just gently working the material. There's our notebook. Now I want to make a pocket folder for my planner. So I'm going to go back to my petticoats and pinstripes and get a sheet of paper. I found this one. I think it will be perfect. We'll make this the inside part of our folder. It will fold up like so. And this will be what you see on the outside. I think this is a nice, safe, coordinating paper because you have to make sure things aren't going to flip up and be upside down. We can also embellish this. We could put on a sticker or something like a rose and make that even cuter before we laminate it. So the next thing we want to do is make this folder. I'm going to take one inch off the length. We're not going to take any off the width because that still only leaves us with a six inch wide pocket. So let's take an inch off the length. We'll just line it up here to the right. My Fisker's cutter goes over to about an inch and a half to allow you to do that and keep it straight. So we'll take an inch off. We'll bring back out our scoring board and this is the way we want it to lie. So we're going to score right in the middle at six inches. Remember, don't score too deep. You can always come back and rescore it. But if you cut too deep, you will rip it. And then we're going to turn it on the side. This is our top. So I think I'll turn it around this way. And we want to score it at three inches because our height is eight and the bottom of our folder is going to be three inches. And yes, I could have made a four inch deep pocket. I do that sometimes. But when you're doing a smaller book, it sometimes looks out of proportion. Now let's burnish our project. Let's fold it first in half carefully, lining up everything to the edge. I just like to double check that. Because sometimes you can get a little off on your scoring. And you know what? You could actually just fold this in half if you're really good at that. But this paper is so thick, I like to score it. There we go, and burnish that down with our little scraping tool. Okay, and then this is our bottom, so this has to fold up. We'll make sure we're nice and aligned at the sides. Now let's open this back up. And we're gonna start at the fold line. It's really hard to see right there, but you'll see when I open it back up. And I'm going to cut a V. Not a huge V, oh, about half an inch. I don't really measure it, I just cut it. And then let's open this back up, fold it down, and there's our pocket. And we'll just put a small bead of glue, because this art glitter glue doesn't take a whole lot, and it is really good stuff. I'm going to hold it a few seconds, and that will set. Let's do the other side. I'm working on glass here. I'm sorry if it glares, but that keeps me from making a big mess on my mat there. 
All right, and it sets up really fast, our glitter glue. And there we have our pocket folder. I love how this looks, our glue is dry now. I want to come in and round these corners. I'm going to use my crocodile on the half inch side, even though our books have a smaller rounded corner, but they are rounded. And so it's the monthly planner. So let's round those corners. I love this thing, y'all, in the old days you had these little tiny punches and they worked, but they didn't work like this thing. And that just rounds it off. We'll do all four corners. There we go. Let's round this one. And then you can also round this one. It just helps it stay in the book better, this one and this one. And this thing usually goes right through it. Yep, just like butter. Now let's get this one. And there we have a folder. We can embellish this further. We could do a lot of things to it. You can laminate it if you want to. I'm not going to laminate mine because it's just really thick paper. But when you laminate it, you just trim around the edge about an eighth of an inch sticking out. And then you come in with an exacto knife and cut open where your pockets are. And that gives you a nice little laminated folder. I showed you the, our folder that's going to go in. And then we have this set of three notebooks that are six by eight that I got at the Dollar General. We're going to put those in as well. And then I love this monthly planner, so it's going in also. So I'm going to do something I've never done before. I'm going to put special holes for this one after I get these strung and we'll string it like in the middle. So I have my elastic. This is the Mandala Crafts Elastic. I got mine on Amazon. And it has lasted me a long time, so it really wasn't that expensive when you think about how many books I have strung with this. So mine is pink, and they sell several colors. I also have the white, but I think we'll use pink on this, and we're going to put some holes here in our book. This is our spine, three quarters of an inch. I am going to put three holes here and three holes here. We'll put a hole in the middle for to be our clasps to go around. And then, of course, somewhere in here, we'll put in the two holes for our small notebook. When we put in three holes at the bottom and the top and string it, that will give us room for four notebooks, and you'll see how that works. I'm going to use my We Are Memory Keepers. I put tape on this end because that's the small one. That's the one eighth inch hole, and that's what you want. But can you use something else? Absolutely. They have these kind of punches, just like for a dollar at Hobby Lobby, and this is also one eighth inch hole punch. So you can get by with that. This one just cuts a whole lot better through this thick laminating, and I love it, and I finally convinced myself to buy one. So I'm going to turn it on the back here, and I'm going to come in about an eighth of an inch from the bottom and try and line these up, but they're gonna be kind of close together because of the way I've done my book. And I'll try and line them up, but I'm gonna be honest with you on camera, they may not be quite as straight as they would be if I was doing it on purpose and just be looking at it. Let's do the second one, and then we'll come in the middle, and that'll give us our three holes here at the bottom. Can you see that? So we have three holes here at the bottom, and we want to mimic that here at the top, and put three as well. So we've got our three there and our three there. For the center, right here, you want to get one as close to the center as possible. You could even use your pokey tool from Cricut or whatever pokey tool you have and put your hole there. I happen to have this granddaddy here, this big crocodile punch too. He is the big bite and he will do everything that little one will do, but not quite as fun to use, honestly, because he's heavy and bulky, but that's how you get down to the middle of one of these books. And you can set the measurement right here our paper is eight and a quarter inches long, so we'll set this at a little over four and an eighth or so. Bring over our cover. We're gonna set it up here at one eighth of an inch. So there's so many measurements because this thing does a lot of stuff. <laughs> it is not just a one trick pony. So we'll line that up here at the bottom. I'm gonna have to go a little bit over to accommodate for my laminating. And then we'll try and find the center and just push our arm down. 
Sometimes I even measure and draw a little dot. Hard for you to tell, but we have a hole right there in the center. So to accommodate this little monthly planner that I want to do in here, I'm going to do something I've never done before. And I'm going to come in and place a special piece of elastic just for it. So I'm going to measure down one and a quarter inches and put a dot. I'll measure in one and a quarter inches from here and put a dot. And then I'm going to punch it with our punch. Right in the center. And turn that around. And I'm just lining it up, seeing where my punch is going to go and punching the dot that I made. And so we have one there and one there. And that's to put our elastic to wrap around our book. So now let's string our book. That's the next thing we want to do today. For our elastic, I know that it's going to need about four times the length of this book. I'm going to leave some over. I'm going to go one, two, because I don't want to pull it too tight when I do it, but you want it snug. Three, four, and we'll cut it right in there. And that's how I do it. I know how many elastics I'm going to have, and I just kind of measure it that way. All right. So to string our book, you're going to start with your piece of elastic, and sometimes it helps if you burn this edge. Start in the middle of the top. This is our top. And we're going to leave it hanging below that middle hole right there. So that's how we start. Then we're going to come through on the back here. We're going to go to the left and pull our elastic back through. And then we'll go straight down. This is the easiest part to remember when you're doing elastic. When you're doing the inside, it goes up and down. It goes vertically. When you're working on the outside, only go across. All right, so let's try it. We'll go down straight across the hole we were just in. And then in the back, of course, we're going to go across. We're going to come up here in the middle. You can see we went across there. Not too tight. It's kind of loose but not too loose. You kind of find a good balance that you like. You don't want it to bend your book when it closes. And of course we want it to go vertically. So we're going to go up into this hole we've already been in. And there we go. Got one of my chads in the way. Y'all know about hanging chads if you're as old as I am. And across, and y'all, I wish I had showed you a perfect line here, but I think with these dots and having to do it so far from the camera, it threw me off big time. So pull it down. And let's go straight down again. And then, of course, we're going to go across and fill that in. You see we got them filled in on both sides. And you can kind of push it to the side. Sometimes it takes a little pokey tool to poke it in there. There we go. And come into the inside. All right, we have plenty of elastic. We're going to join these two. We're going to tie them off with a couple of knots, making sure everything's the right tightness that we want. And I think this last one can be a little tighter. There we go. So now we join these two and tie them off and that gives us four strands. So that's what I'm going to do now. Just make oh, a couple of knots, make sure it's as tight as our other ones. But again, it can't be too tight or it'll bow your book. So we have a couple of knots there. And then we'll just cut off the excess just like that. And now we want to make 
this one to go here and here. There's no cute way to do this, I'm going to be honest. Normally, I only have my elastics running this way, but I really want to put this one in. So, I'm going to use this extra piece of elastic we had, and I'm going to poke it through here. Just pull that aside and make a knot on the back. And the way we can cover this up is with a spine charm. We can make some cute charms to go on our book. And you could put another hole in here, but it's really hard to do more than three on a spine that's three quarters of an inch. Because you need about a quarter of an inch for each spine, I mean for each hole on your spine. I'm going to put that there. Then I'm going to go up here, get our other hole. Like I said, I haven't done this before, but I did want to accommodate that little book. And this is for me. I'm checking the tightness. I think I got it. a little snug. And then we'll tie a knot here. Tie another knot. I think it's going to take at least two. And then there's our line for our small book. So we have four elastics for our big books, this small one for our little one, and it does leave us some little knots there. But like I said, we can cover that up with some spine charms if it bothers you. And if it bothers you, you don't have to put it in, right? It's your book. Now that we have that done, we want to put in one more piece of elastic here. We're going to wrap it around our book like so. And that should give us plenty. We want it to be a little snug when we tie it. Just like that. We have our elastic here, and we want to put in this elastic to go around the middle. And I have my pokey tool. We'll turn it over, move this aside. And poke it right down through the hole. And I'll pull it out the other side. And then I'm going to take these two and tie a couple of knots in them. But before I tie the final knot, I'm going to make sure that I don't have too much slack in my book, right? I'm sorry if I kick that camera again. All right. Have it there, a little knot. We'll pull it down through there and wrap it around our book. And yes, it's too big. So we get to adjust it now. I like that pretty good. So we need to put it right in there. And when I'm sure it's the way I want it, then I'll cut off the excess. We won't leave that. All right, let's wrap it around. I think that's gonna be pretty good when we get our books in there. There we go. And there's our book. Now let's put our items in. Okay, we know we want this in the center because that's kind of where our lines are. We just want to find the middle and then we'll place it in. I think I'll put two of these long elastics in front of it and two in back. If I wanted it right in front or in the back, I needed to put my holes a little further over, but I was afraid they might strip out in my book, so I just left them that way. I think we can cut that off some more. Okay, bring over our books. I like to have my pocket folder right in front. So we'll put it in first. And again, you could laminate it. I just chose not to this time. And we need to find the center of our books. Oh my goodness, this is my favorite book. Look at that, y'all. I think I'll put it in next. We'll open it up in the center. It's a lined notebook. You could use that for a prayer journal. There's so many things you could do. There's our little book. Now let's come in with this green one. Find the center. This one's hard to tell. 
and we'll put that in. And now we have our last book. Put that in. And that's a pretty full planner right there. And it closes like so. And there's our elastic. And then to dress it up, we can always put a charm here. That would look really pretty. We'll probably do that in a future video. Open it up. There's our book. What about if we take this rose out of our stickabilities here? It's my favorite. And put that right on our notebook. Maybe like so. These are double stick. And we'll just place that right on our folder so that we see that when we open it up. We've got our pink here, it's got our nice little green spine. I'm glad we changed that out. And that will stick down over time. And we can put some cut aparts in here, put our notes, our receipts from where we went to town and bought stuff for our hobby business. There's our notebook, it's lined. We've got our monthly planner right in the center. It has the months that you write in, so it doesn't matter what time of the year you start. Got some more notes back here. And finally, our third notebook. And the good thing about this type of planner is that you can always add more items later. You can take out the ones you've used, add a different notebook. This is an odd size, so it was a little bit to pull it off but I hope you enjoyed seeing how you can take some store-bought items plus some of your crafting items and have a whole new planner. So later, maybe we'll come in and add some more things to the notebook, but I think this is very serviceable for me, and I hope you learned something too along the way. Bye, guys! Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you like, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. Bye y'all!